Well, good evening. Welcome, everybody. My name is Brad Waldschmidt. I'm an engineer working with NDOT on the Neighborhood Street Traffic Calming Program. Thank you for joining this evening to discuss Highlander Drive. Um, I'm joined by my colleague, Lan. Lan, I'll let you uh, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm also a consultant uh, who works with Brad at uh, Kimley Horn, um, and we're here to help at NDOT help out you guys with um, the ballot presentation. Excellent. Thank you, Lane. Uh, so what we like to do is go through about a 15 minute presentation, talk through uh, traffic calming, the program, how Highlander Drive was selected, uh, some options that NDOT uses to slow traffic down uh, with traffic calming. And then we even have a kind of a first draft concept design for what traffic calming along Highlander Drive could look like. So that's kind of what we want to go through here. Uh, before we get started, I know Council Member Benton is on the call. Council Member Benton, is there any opening remarks that you'd like to share? Uh, yes. Um, we're excited that we have an opportunity to have some traffic calming in the area. I think we've got a broken sign up front that proves the fact that we could use it. And uh, this is going to be something that's going to be beneficial, it looks like. I would like to tell everyone that that's involved in this particular neighborhood, the Hickory Highland area, that you may not realize it, but you are part of a homeowners association, an HOA, and those dues have been paid on your behalf for you all this time, and all the upkeep have been taken care of on your behalf by your developer, but they are about to hand this subdivision over to you, and so we're going to need to get together and have a meeting, and I encourage you to contact me at david.benton at nashville.gov, david.benton at nashville.gov and just send me an email to contact so that I can get back to you when we can get together and talk more about it. And we're not going to talk about it anymore now tonight because we got to focus on our traffic calming, but uh, definitely send me a message. Excellent. Thank you, Council Member Benton. We'll go ahead and move on to the presentation uh, real quick. I always like to make sure our technology is working. Council Member Benton, can you see the title slide? Absolutely. Excellent. All right. All right. So, uh, so we're trying to talk about Highlander Drive. So, uh, what is traffic calming? Well, the neighborhood street traffic calming program focuses on residential streets, just like Highlander Drive. And we look for physical solutions that are going to reduce speeds along streets. Uh, we like to reference three E's of traffic calming. The first is education. And this meeting right here is a great example of education where we, as the engineers, uh, can educate everyone about traffic calming and some possible solutions, uh, but you all are the experts of your street because you live along Highlander Drive. So together we make a great team uh, educating each other. The second D is enforcement. Enforcing the posted speed limit is absolutely part of traffic calming uh, to really help try to maintain and manage the vehicle speeds. Um, unfortunately, or uh, however, Nashville Department of Transportation does not have jurisdiction over the law enforcement and enforcement. So while it's important part of traffic calming, it's not something NDOT has much uh, jurisdiction or control over. However, NDOT does have more control over this 30, which is the engineering, doing something to the roads to encourage slower vehicle speeds. Now, one of the reasons the traffic calming program uh, is present in Nashville and in Metro Nashville is the focus on safety and a vision zero, a vision of zero deaths on our streets. Um, if the unfortunate crash happens where a pedestrian is hit by a moving vehicle and that vehicle is going 25 miles per hour, that pedestrian has an 89% chance of surviving. But if you look to the far right of the slide, if that same vehicle is going 45 miles per hour and hits a pedestrian, that pedestrian only has a 35% chance of survival. Now here at NDOT, we don't want any pedestrians getting hit by cars, but if the really unfortunate accident does happen, uh, we really want these vehicles to be traveling at lower speeds, uh, especially in res our residential streets, just to really increase that chance of survival by the pedestrian. So that's one reason why traffic calming and managing these speeds closer to the posted speed limit is so important. And that's really what the neighborhood street traffic calming programs, really one of its missions is. Um, so Highlander Drive was one of 85 streets chosen back in August. There has been another round of selections that happened about a month ago. Highlander Drive was chosen uh, back in August. Finally, we were able to get this meeting scheduled. Um, but yeah, over 500 streets have been applied for 
back then, 85 were chosen. Highlander is one of them. Now, we do like to pause. We are here, Lan and I, we are here for traffic calming, but you may have other uh, concerns or observations or comments that you feel like someone at the city needs to know. I want to make sure you know about Hub Nashville. You can either call 311 or you can go to hub.nashville.gov and report something. If you think someone at Metro Nashville needs to know about it, it could be if you think there should be new signs, new stop signs, something about a traffic signal is not working well, there's tree limbs blocking part of the road, anything you think someone needs to know, this Hub Nashville is a great tool. We just like to make sure residents are aware of it. But if you if you have any questions about traffic calming, we're here for you tonight. We got you covered. Um, so real quick, I mentioned Highlander Drive was one of the 85 streets chosen back in August. We collect data for every street. So the 500 plus streets, we collect data, things like how fast are cars going, how many cars per day, are there sidewalks? Are there things like schools and parks along the street? Um, have there been any pedestrian injuries or pedestrian fatalities along these streets? And we collect all this data and we essentially put, like, see what the, the, the numbers and the metrics show us. And that's how we determine the streets that are to be selected. And again, back in August, Highlander Drive, I don't remember what the, what the score or what the rank was, but Highlander was in one of those 85. Um, so that's how all the streets get looked at and chosen. Um, just to communicate Highlander Drive, we are looking at what I believe is the entirety of Highlander Drive from Mount View Road to the end of the street. And you can see here at the bottom, when we did collect data on your street, uh, the 85th percentile, which is not the average speed, it's a little higher. It's something statistically that us traffic engineers look at. The 85th percentile speed was 34 uh, miles per hour. And you can see there are a little over 750 uh, vehicles over a 24 hour period when we collected uh, data on your street. And we love maps. So here's an example. Uh, excuse me, a map of your street. Again, we're looking at Highlander Drive from Mount View Road all the way uh, basically to the end of the street. So that's that's the focus of the traffic calming. So we'd like to kind of talk about some of the items in our toolkit uh, for traffic calming. One of our more common tools are these speed cushions. They're modular rubber devices uh, at their highest height above the road. They're three inches. Uh, and then they have a few different lengths we choose from. And each of those cushions, you see some pictures, there's two of them, some pictures, there's three of them. Each one of those is six foot wide. Now you see on this bullet here on this slide, it says reduced impact to emergency response vehicles. I wanna go to the next slide and then come back to this. And I think that'll make a little more sense. Another option we don't do as much of, but it is an option are speed tables. Same modular rubber devices, still three inches. Uh, maximum height above the road. Uh, but you'll see here, this table kind of crosses the entire road, which that's really effective at slowing all vehicles, like passenger vehicles. It's also effective at slowing emergency response vehicles. So fire trucks, ambulances, um, they're gonna be going over these speed tables also. And sometimes they may need to be getting somewhere um, pretty quickly. Uh, so I'm gonna go back now one of the benefits of these speed cushions is you may be able to see they have these gaps between them. They're six foot wide and there's gaps between them. Uh, fire trucks, ambulances, they have a wider uh, axle and a wider wheelbase. So when they need to get somewhere maybe a little quicker, they can straddle these speed cushions, um, especially on their front wheels. Uh, on their back wheels, because of all that weight, behind the back of those vehicles. Sometimes they have extra tires and they will go up the sides that are kind of ramped up on the sides. Um, they, they, their back wheels may go over them a little bit. They are less of an impact though, these speed cushions are to emergency response vehicles compared to the speed tables. So that's one reason why speed cushions um, are usually one of the more common NDOT choices uh, for designs. Um, and just to kind of demonstrate, we have done some before and after studies, streets before speed cushions were installed and streets uh, after speed cushions were installed. And we are, we are seeing a benefit. We're seeing a reduction in vehicle speeds. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show this information that we have done some studies and it's, it's, it's working like we hoped it would on some of the streets that we've collected. Um, another tool are these radar feedback signs. Um, they have, usually have the speed limit sign in white. And then the additional uh, electronic readout sign that 
that you know shows your speed. Um, here in Nashville, I believe it shows your speed, and when you get above the speed limit, it turns red. Some of them may flash at you. Um, it's just really to let people know. Sometimes people kind of just aren't paying attention to the posted speed limit. This can help uh, remind drivers what it is. And we have seen um, some streets just be very effective. Some streets, not so much, but some streets have been. We've been looking at the different characteristics of the roads um, for where it does work and doesn't work to try to uh, recommend them where we think it makes sense. But these are another tool in the toolkit. Uh, another tool we have are these are narrowing. Um, both of these pictures, the streets used to not have the white edge lines. And so it was sort of a wider area of pavement. And the traffic calming program added these white lines on the edges of both of these streets. So what it does is, it, it act, even though the road, the pavement doesn't change, adding the white lines creates this visual uh, narrowing to the driver where they, they you know, it can have a mental effect of just wanting to slow a little more because the lines sort of uh, demonstrate or visualize a narrower uh, travel lane. So these are a tool that we uh, we do use on design. Sometimes we use these along with speed cushions. It all depends on the street. Uh, but narrowing with pavement markings can be effective. Um, some other tools are on the left is an example of bulb outs. Uh, just again, on the left photo, uh, there used to not be any white striping or those vertical white uh, poles or the bollards or flex posts. And just sort of installing both the pavement markings, the white lines and those bars, sort of just narrows the road and the intersection. So it feels a little tighter and people drive a little slower. Uh, the example on the right is also in Nashville. That's, that's a chicane where you essentially, if you're driving, you have to turn your steering wheel a little to the right and then turn your steering wheel a little to the left to stay in your lane. And that turning of steering wheels can also have a natural a speed reduction as opposed to just a, a straight, you know, straight for the whole way, which can sometimes influence and encourage maybe faster speeds. Um, and then one of the last tool examples in the toolkit are these traffic circles. Um, roundabouts are the larger uh, circles that you drive through on or across, around the city. Uh, these traffic circles are really smaller and we don't, uh, ever widen pavement with these. So we really have to see a pretty large intersection where we can just put one of these in the middle and it can help because again, people are having to turn their steering wheels uh, to kind of go around it. Um, these can be challenging sometimes to find a good intersection that fits that doesn't require any widening because the traffic calming program does not do any widening. Uh, but all the same, this is one of the toolkit options. So we like to make sure we're educating everybody. Um, now what we've done here is we have uh, prepared a very preliminary concept design, which I want to make sure we repeat. This is not final, uh, but it's just sort of our first attempt at a design. Um, after this meeting, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be doing a site visit and doing some more measurements, and we may change this a little bit. But we wanted to kind of demonstrate what a traffic calming design could look like on Highlander Drive. Um, you'll see that purple line or that kind of the magenta line, that's Highlander. On the left is where Mount View Road is, and you'll kind of see as we go to the bottom right, that's where the where the end is, just past Ballard Court. And uh, we, there's the always stop there at Winton Drive. And so what we feel like perhaps the traffic calming design could look like on Highlander Drive is speed cushions. Um, every location where you see a, a C inside a yellow trapezoid, that would be a location of speed cushions. You know, so they might be two of those cushions across or like this photo example on the slide three across we're not sure yet we gotta do some measurements but so what we're showing here is four different locations along highlander drive where these speed cushions we we may we may design them there um and so we like to kind of just give an idea of what it could look like we may go out there and do some more measurements and some engineering work and figure out it actually needs to be three cushions total or maybe it'll be four cushions total but the, the bottom line is it won't be one, it won't be eight or 10. We just kind of like to give an example of what it could look like. I um, also want to call your attention, there's a there's a R inside an orange diamond, uh, kind of closer to Mountain View Road. We haven't done our measurements in our site visit yet, but we do know there's that steep hill as you turn off of Mountain View Road and start going downhill into Highlander Drive. We are not able to install speed cushions on very steep hills. Uh, and so that's one reason why we're not putting a speed cushion right as you enter. Uh, but we want to do those measurements to see if it actually, if we can or not. 
And so what we kind of thought through is in addition to the speed cushions, as people turn from Mount View Road and enter your neighborhood, perhaps one of those radar feedback signs with that electronic readout would be a good reminder as people are entering your neighborhood, maybe going downhill, just to remind them of what the speed limit is and what their speed is. So that was kind of the thought behind our initial thoughts for this concept design here. Um, we have about four more slides, but we are happy to come back to this at the end during the question uh, and answer time. So this is just an example of a design. We'll come back, but we wanna get through the rest of the presentation real quick. So we are here at neighborhood at the neighborhood meeting. It's the uh, little circle that's highlighted in red. After this, we are gonna do our site visit, do some measurements, engineering work, prepare, I'm gonna go back, Prepare a more detailed design than this, a design that actually proposes speed cushions, the, the, the design will be more zoomed in. We'll even identify whose front yards, whose addresses and driveways um, these would be proposed near or in front of. So that's gonna be our next step in that design, kind of right in the middle of the slide here. Then we have a choice. After we finish our design, we have a choice. One choice is once the design is ready, we will go straight to ballot and we will send out mailer ballots to each property owner along Highlander Drive to vote on whether they want this traffic calming to happen or not. Um, the other option is before that online ballot, we can have a second meeting. We can have a second meeting just like this one um, and talk through the final design, the more detailed design, and then go to ballot. Um, usually that second meeting, it might add you know, four to six weeks in the time frame, but we're happy to do it. NDOT's happy to do it. Some neighborhoods want that second meeting just to make sure everyone gets to see it before the vote happens. Some neighborhoods and streets just wanna go straight to the vote. So we'll probably ask here at the end of this meeting uh, what the preference is, but that's sort of a decision point that we're gonna have. Now I wanna talk about this online ballot. Um, one, of the, one of the neat things about the traffic calling program is um, and uh, we are going to prepare the traffic calming design. It is up to the property owners along Highlander Drive for whether or not it happens. Uh, just like hopefully the meeting mailers for this meeting were sent out to everybody along Highlander Drive, and uh, in the future, once the design is ready, we'll send mailer ballots to every property owner along Highlander Drive. And it'll have a, a unique ID code. It'll have uh, a QR code and also a web link to go to the NDOT webpage where you can cast your vote. And that design, probably in a PDF format, will also be on the NDOT webpage. So when you go to vote, if you wanna open up that design to look at it closer before you vote, you'll be able to do that. And once these ballots get mailed out, that there will be a six week voting period um, where everyone along Highlander Drive will have the chance to vote. Yes, we want this traffic calming or no, we do not want this traffic calming. And at the end of the six weeks, NDOT, we tally up the votes, and if 66% or if two thirds of the people that actually vote, vote yes, then the vote is successful, this traffic calming, whatever the design is, it's gonna happen. However, if two thirds of everyone who votes does not, if it's less than two thirds, if they do not vote yes, um, then the traffic calming design that we uh, that is being voted on would not happen, and end up we would uh, coordinate further with the neighborhood lead or maybe the council member on maybe a a, a scaled back traffic calming uh, that we could maybe do on the street. Uh, for instance, maybe one without speed cushions. That would basically would be a, if if the results in no, maybe it's a traffic calming without any speed cushions on the street. So that's the balloting process, and just to kind of demonstrate again. Um, if, if the parcels that actually touch Highlander Drive, the ones that are highlighted in yellow here, those are the ones that will be eligible uh, to vote. We, we don't we don't let uh, businesses, I don't think there, there may not be any along this street. Um, if there's multiple property, if one, if one owner owns multiple properties, that property owner gets one vote, even if they have two or three properties, just one vote total. And then we don't have vacant properties. Uh, vote either, which I think there may be maybe one or two properties that are actually, there's no home on it, so they don't get a vote either. Um, but this would be the people who would vote um, only the properties that physically their front yard, side yard, backyard touches Highlander Drive. They're the ones 
uh, who will get the chance to vote. That's the NDOT policy uh, for traffic calming. So again, my name is Brad Walchmitt. Uh, happy to have gone through this presentation. And I want to, I'll go ahead and pause and ask if, uh, I guess, Lan, I'll, I'll ask my colleague, uh, have there been any questions in the, on the online chat? There has not been any questions. Okay. Well, great. We'll open it up to the floor. Does anybody who's on the call uh, have any comments or any questions or anything? I would like to just say, having gone through this process before for our own homeowners association, uh, I really am impressed with this new radar feedback sign and uh, am extremely jealous, wishing I had that in my neighborhood. And uh, I, I think that would be great to have. And I actually like your design that you already have. That's pretty impressive. Um, and just kind of like drop it in, stir it, and there it is. It, it looks pretty good. Now, like you said, I know that you go back and you get a closer look and confirm that that's the best design for this neighborhood. Um, but it just quick glance, looking and seeing how long the street or road is, I think that's a pretty good design to start with. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you, council member. And again, our next steps will be go out to do some measurements. You know, we, um, just to make sure sometimes we get these concept designs and they don't really change much to the final design because we've been doing this enough, but every once in a while, we, we measure something, we realize we got to change it up. But, um, I think I, I feel fairly confident saying that, you know, it would either be four cushion locations, our final design, maybe three cushion locations, probably four, um, possible change to three though. And then we just feel like with that radar feedback sign there, as you enter Highlander Drive, that was something um, we're, we'll, we'll take a look at again. You know, um, we just felt like with that steep, steep hill, what we didn't want is people coming around down Highlander Drive around that curve through Kevin Wood Court going super, super fast um, if they were driving recklessly. I thought that radar feedback sign just might help kind of manage the traffic as they're going down the hill to that first speed cushion location. Yeah, I agree. Great. I, I apologize. Um, with me sharing my screen, I'm not able to see the participants. Uh, council member, has anybody from the street or the neighborhood been able to join? I don't see additional ones at this time. No. Okay. Okay. Well, that concludes uh, our presentation. We're again, we're happy to stay as long as you'd like. But I think what we would like to know, and because council member, it's you, and no one, no one else has joined. Um, we we don't necessarily have to have our answer. This evening, we usually like to know at the end of this meeting uh, whether there's a desire to kind of go to ha ha for us prepare our design and then have that second meeting uh, to make sure people are aware before the vote, or if there's a desire just to skip the second meeting. Once the design's ready, we'll send the mailer ballots out and we'll do the voting. Um, I'm a, we we can certainly wait, you know, a few days or a week if you want to try to reach out to the neighborhood and figure out if they have a preference. So I I think we we'd be okay with not. <laughs> really encouraging that decision be made tonight um, if, if that's your preference. Okay, so would I just email you? Directly? I think so, yeah, you could email uh, myself, you could email, uh, you know, the NDOT traffic calming. Let me see, go back here. Yeah, you could email the NDOT traffic calming email, but emailing me is just as fine. Uh, I, I will respond, so uh, that'd work as well. And we can be pretty flexible um yeah the only reason we offer the option is that some streets kept asking for it hey can we you know skip can we skip a second meeting just go straight to the vote so we started offering it as an option but we just want to make the neighborhoods you know happy whatever format they prefer we want to make sure everyone's comfortable before they vote on anything yeah and and i agree and i think what i'd like to do is is give it a, a couple of days and just make sure i don't get some feedback where people go oh i wanted to be there I couldn't you know i definitely want to know more about it then we might ask for that second meeting. Um, otherwise, uh, I would say we just go right through. But but let's give it a couple of days and uh, let that incubate, and maybe we'll get some feedback, and uh, then I'll be in touch to let you know which way we want it to go. I think that sounds great. And council member, um, every once in a while we have, uh, it doesn't happen often, but every few times we have in incurred uh, situations where we've learned that for whatever reason with the mail, uh, the post office, sometimes the mailers did not get delivered. 
Um, so if you would be willing that if you'd be willing, if you do get in touch with anybody from the neighborhood who again has a property right along Highlander drive, if you could just sort of make sure that some people got the mailers because um, we, we like to know that for some reason, the mailers that we prepared and sent out um, didn't get received. Um, that may also be a, just encouraging, uh, encourage the decision on a second meeting or not, you know? Sounds good. Yeah, that makes sense. Excellent. Well, council right. member, really appreciate your time. And again, we'll, uh, what we let, we'll share the recording with the NDOT folks. And I would say usually up to a week, usually these get uploaded to the NDOT uh, YouTube page. Uh, and then, yeah, that's an easy guide to, and you can direct anybody who wants to, Hear about Highlander Drive and traffic calming. All right. Sounds great. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good rest of your evening. All right. You too. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Lynn.